Good evening. It's Wednesday, and we're continuing our meditations through the final days of Jesus, uh, his life as it leads up to his death on the cross, and then his resurrection, which we look forward to celebrating this Sunday, Easter. Well, uh, during this week, Wednesday is actually the quietest day uh, for Jesus, um, particularly when you consider what happened on the days before this. So if you think of the the triumphal entry on Sunday, which shook the city. And you think of Monday and the cleansing of the temple and the zeal that Jesus showed in doing that. And then you think of Tuesday and all the controversies that he was engaged in in the temple courts. And Wednesday, by contrast, passes more quietly. Uh, we're told that Jesus continues his daily practice of traveling uh, from Bethany to Jerusalem early in the morning to teach in the temple courts. Uh, that's what Luke says, Luke 21. Every day he was teaching in the temple, but at night he went out and lodged on the mount called Olivet. And early in the morning, all the people came to him in the temple to hear him. Jesus has the attention of everyone uh, in the temple courts. He, he's, he's shown with his authority and his actions and his teaching that he is somebody special. And, and the people uh, view him as a celebrity. But not everybody's so friendly towards him. Jesus has a contingent of powerful and determined enemies. And so we read in Matthew and Mark and in Luke uh, of the murderous plotting of the chief priests, uh, the elders, uh, the leaders of the people. Matthew 26 says that the chief priests and elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among the people. And Mark as well says, it was now two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So he gives us the time marker there. It's Wednesday. And he says that the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest him by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar from the people. And finally, Luke says much the same thing. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew near, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to put him to death, for they feared the people. You can hear all, all the language of fear. They feared what would happen if they would arrest and kill Jesus. They feared that they would incite a riot. And so they're willing to bide their time because they know, or at least they think they know, that they are the ones who have power and authority. And that if they just wait for the right time to dispense with Jesus, then they will win in the end. And so their mind is made up and their verdict is rendered. And I don't know about you, but when I hear of all this stealth, all this plotting that these evil men are doing, uh, I can't help but think of Psalm 2. Psalm 2, where David writes, Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand, and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. And of course, the anointed one is Jesus. And Acts makes this very clear for us in Acts chapter 4, where we read the believers saying, Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. But then they say this, that they did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen, which is a remarkable verse, which tells us that God had planned this all beforehand so that even as these evil people were making their evil plans, it all fit within the determined will of our God. And so God says in Psalm 4, through David, uh, the one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. Then he rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask of me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will rule them with an iron scepter. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you be destroyed in your way. 
for his wrath can flare up in a moment. But blessed are all who take refuge in him. And of course, there's the good news that there's not just wrath in store for, for everyone, but the wrath is only for those who do not take refuge in the Son. For those who do take refuge in the Son, there is blessing. Shall we pray? Lord God, Father in heaven, we uh, are in awe of your authority. We're in awe of your power. As we read this psalm, as we read uh, what was written in Acts, of how all of this was part of your will, part of your plan, which you determined beforehand should happen. And what a plan it is, Lord, we would never have done it this way ourselves, but Lord, we we again marvel at your wisdom as we did yesterday. But today, we, we notice your power. We notice your complete authority, even over all the evil schemes, or even over all the plotting uh, of earthly, powerful people. And so, Lord, we pray that you would help us to recognize this and to embrace Jesus, the Son, so that we would find that blessing. Lord, help us to take refuge in him each and every day again. And hear our prayer for his sake. Amen. And I'd like to leave you with uh, a version of Psalm 2 being sung. I think it's a beautiful version which captures the tone of this psalm, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Why do the restless nations madly rage? What party schemes are they in vain contriving? The kings and rulers of the earth engage In rash attempts to plot their empty striving They stand prepared, they all conspire together Against the Lord and his anointed king Let us be saved and loose and break their fetters Cast off their chains, their shackles from us be. Though proudly now they raise their battle cry, How vain is all their frenzied opposition! The Lord who sits enthroned in heaven on high, Laughs them to scorn, he holds them in derision. Then he will speak in wrath and indignation, and all their hosts will be with terror fill. I set my king, so runs his proclamation, up on Mount Zion, on my holy hill. O oh, peoples, listen to the Lord's decree. I will make known his royal declaration. Your father, I become this very day. You are my son, to you I give the nations. Ask what you will, your heritage I'll make them. Their lands you will possess both near and far. For with the rod of iron you shall break them. To pieces like a potter's jar. Take heed, O rulers of the earth and hear. Be wise, O kings, and let his edict warn you. Rejoice with trembling, serve the Lord with fear. Now kiss the sun, lest he in fury scorn you. Lest in his wrath the Lord cause you to perish. For quickly kindled is his anger's grace, but all in trust in him the Lord will cherish. He will defend.